So, so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Precious God, we praise and bless your holy name, especially in this special day in which the church celebrates the exaltation of the cross. We ask you to help us appreciate this great gift of your love shown to us in the person of Jesus uh, being placed on the cross and being crucified for us with uh, our sins nailed to the cross and new life coming forth from uh, the bosom of your of your love. Help us to also crucify our own desires, our own uh, interest for the sake of others so that we can bear fruits, abundant fruits of redemption and of love around us. We'll say this opening prayer on the back of the cover uh, together. Let, Let the word of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable before you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yes, Gerald. Let's go ahead with that uh, from the chapter 27 of the book of Sirach. Yes, first reading Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he speak pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the most high's covenant and overlook faults. Remember death. Remember. Set enmity aside. And Ray sharing from the chat, forgive your neighbor. Cease from sin. Let's hear it again, Gerald. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the most high's covenant and overlook faults.
I was having dinner with this uh, family member who was visiting from out of town last night. And in the, our conversation, she explained to me uh, the difference between resentment, having a resentment and having a grudge. Um, the, the grudge is, um, the grudge in, in her opinion had, um, had a, a dash of uh, anger and also hatred. Um, some hatred mixed in with it. Whereas resentment is is more is more subtle, and it's one where there's no hatred. Uh, there's an overall uh, feeling of um, liking and accepting the person, but with one's um, one's uh, self esteem or one's uh, ego perhaps uh, hurt. And um, I like what she said. This is a young, a young, fairly young cousin of mine. And um, in light of this, of this reading, I, uh, I, I like, uh, I like um, all these admonitions by the author of the book of Sirach. They are so practical and uh, down to earth. Because we all, I feel that sometimes I. I don't think I have a grudge against anybody, but sometimes maybe resentment, perhaps. So it's part of human life, of our condition. So I feel like remember death, remember your last days, and then many of these things, uh, you will put them on the scale and just um, you need to move on, move on and not get stuck with these petty things of, of yours. It's a heavy burden to carry, to carry any kind of hate, hatred or to hold a grudge. It's, it's a heavy burden to carry for, for the one that's, you know, that feels that way. At least I think so. You may be so used to it, you don't even know you're carrying it. Um, Ray, you're shaking your head. No, you've got a serious grief against another person. It will affect how you treat others as well. Yes, and I, I guess what I'm saying is that Get sometimes that monkey off your back. Yeah, for some people though, it gets normalized and they get used to being aggrieved, right? Like, who would want a monkey on their back? You would want to get it off. Hey, that person is generally very hard to get along with for anyone. For anyone, it, yes, he's not well liked. You, you, it's it's not possible to really want to do harm to another person over a long period of time. Call it a well, what? The McCoy, what, what are they called? Uh, what the Hatfields and the McCoy families. <laughs> That's gonna permeate your action, your behavior. Yeah. Another thing, Father O can relate to this. Not bringing reconciliation with a dying parent. If you fail to do so, it carries on for, I mean, after the person dies, family member, you cannot achieve reconciliation anymore. That hurt, 
is going to carry on for years. And it's going to affect your personality. Mm. Very important to bury the hatchet before they die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's not an easy answer or explanation to a situation like that, but it's it's uh, sometimes uh, tears. Tears can be very cathartic, and um, I I have witnessed reconciliation through tears without any verbal, you know, without any verbal acknowledgement of um, forgiving the other person. Um, or asking for forgiveness. Sometimes it's the conciliation goes both ways, either the, the dying one having offended or the, the survivor, you know, having to be uh, forgiven. But in, in, those, um, in those last days, like this, the author of Sirach says, you know, remember your last days. In those last days, it is so, it brings so much healing to to try to bring that reconciliation, even if it cannot be verbalized, no, but with the tears. The person that is dying perhaps can, you know, they say that the last thing you lose is a sense of hearing, that even though the person may seem to be already gone, I mean, that doesn't comprehend, but they can hear and process. So maybe the sobbing of someone that is asking for forgiveness, um, without words but just the sobbing it's it's enough for the person that is dying if, if that makes sense if you're ever in that situation remember that after the heart stops whether they're in a hospital bed or having drowned the brain still works for about six minutes and the ears, eyes, nose, speech is directly hardwired through cranial nerves into the brain. So that brain, that dead person still has a functional brain. So they have six minutes to make things right. Well, that, that's what uh, the EMTs tell you that if a person is drowned or is electrocuted and you don't resuscitate them in six weeks, they're brain dead in six minutes. <laughs> six weeks. <laughs> six minutes. <laughs> brain dead. Yeah, when a lot of uh, when you're younger, you think go ahead. I just said a lot of states define death as brain dead, not heart dead. Okay. I was going to say that the remember your last days um, uh, is a, like a shake up, wake up call to um, because it's e it's easy to it's easy. To, it's it, when I say it may not be easy to harbor anger, um, uh, but um, it's uncomfortable to deal with it. Sometimes asking for forgiveness or even giving forgiveness is uncomfortable. So we put it off um, until it's too late. Or you hope it you hope it goes away. If it wasn't, everybody would do it. Yeah. Like I like the old saying, don't let the anger uh, set on your back. And let the anger what? Before you go to sleep at night, do not go to sleep at night before you ask someone to forgive you or you forgive someone. Because what happens if you die during the night? Right.
Yeah, 30 some odd years ago, my dad was very, very ill and some friends stopped by the hospital and wanted to take me out to dinner. So when we were sitting in the restaurant, they asked me how I would feel if my dad passed away while I was eating dinner with them. And I remember telling them that we had no fences to mend. My dad knew I loved him and I knew that he loved me and spent his life working hard. And yes, when I was younger and a teenager, there was moments where we didn't get along, but that was all behind us. So um, I like to think of it as mending the broken fences. And um, I always think about that. He died. He did. Um, he did pass away a couple of days later. But um, it, it, things were good between us. It was very good. And I'm very thankful for that. Makes me think why your why your friends. That's a kind of a personal question to ask somebody. How you would feel if your dad were to die when you were, were at the restaurant? Right. It seemed like an odd, um, seemed like an odd question, but it's like well, it's okay. We were we were all really good friends and and very close, and um, uh, I wasn't offended by it. And so you, don't, you don't hold any grudge against them. Oh no 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 no, <laughs> no. absolutely not. And you know I mean other people might have thought the same thing only they was just too shy to ask <laughs> but um you know maybe maybe they wondered how i felt and maybe how they would feel if their parents were dying maybe they you know maybe they had an ulterior motive for asking or a but, reflection maybe it was a reflection on how like you say like how they were mm -hmm. feeling how they would feel if they were in your position. Right. They would have the, the guts, so to speak, in their mind, their, the guts to leave, you know, their dad alone or or that they would feel very guilty as if yeah. you know, they had abandoned their dad. Right. But, um, you know, I wasn't offended at all by the question and it was it was perfectly okay. Well, well, at least you uh, he would uh, they would die in, in a situation where it was was friendly and comfortable, and they were enjoying themselves. Right. Yeah, and I think some people have a curiosity about uh, death, and at that time, their parents were all still alive, so maybe they. Uh, and they were my age, so maybe they just had, you know, questions about serious illness and death. And uh, anyway, I yeah. hoped it. I hope they understood that um, not being said that if they had any uh, issues with anyone, that they would mend their fences before it's too late. Problem I pick up sometimes reading the Old Testament as of like last week in Ezekiel, this week, if you just drift back into chapter 26 of Sirach, you read some things that are very disturbing. And a headstrong woman is to be regarded as a dog. Um, my wife and I lived in the Jewish community in, in Panama. We had three temples very close to us, and a couple of them very conservative. But we saw that where the women walked behind the men, where the women went into separate entrances to services and stuff. But uh, some of the things you read, like we well, just read, if you want to go back to chapter 26, it will, you know, it's, it's hard reading.
so I think, and I don't mean to jump too far ahead to the gospel. So I think Jesus is taking the salient pieces of that and bringing it to new light in the New Testament. That quote was wrong. Never let the sun sit on your wrath. That's what it should have been. Oh. Don't go to sleep angry. Yeah. Okay. Maybe going back to what Ray said earlier on in our um, sharing is that for what, for what man is impossible, there's nothing impossible for God. And um, you mentioned, Ray, that if you don't come to terms with your, like, for example, a dying parent, um, that is going to, you know, affect you and even your personality for the rest of your life. You're going to carry that burden and that cross. And uh, to some extent, I agree. But as we are talking more about it, I think the life of the spirit is so powerful the life of God in us, that as we make spiritual progress in our lives with, uh, you know, the quality of our prayer, the way perhaps we receive communion, the way we reach out to others, that has a, a, a great healing effect in us to where something that, humanly speaking, did not have closure, uh, mm -hmm. From a, from, from a divine point of view, that person is being healed, um, perhaps in some mysterious way, um, sensing that there, is the, that there is forgiveness, even after death, that the loved one has, you know, has forgiven them or that the one who died is experiencing the, the forgiveness that the one that is alive is is given the other is is and that's you know the power of grace in us so i think that's possible it could be maybe far-fetched but but maybe not it depends on the person's capability of you know re uh, reinforcing his uh, the spiritual house of his soul i i agree that the journey as we walk and get closer and closer, it becomes easier to forgive even the, the hardest things that have been against you. And I, I see that too as well, Father, that, you know, can go both ways in prayer, in prayer for that person. Yeah. Or a loved one. Oh, oh, the beautiful thoughts that it reminds me that my mother used to tell me that she could sit down and talk to her dead mother, my grandmother, and we get answers. <laughs> call it telepathic, call it spiritual, call it whatever you want. She believed it. That's all that was important. She knew that she was talking to Johanna, to her mother. <laughs> discussing her problems, and her mother was giving her advice. Crazy, right? That's yeah. sweet, actually, in a, in a, bit, in a little well, way. It, it's a beautiful thought. I, I wish I possessed it. <laughs> I think that she probably already knew what her mother would tell her. Yeah. Oh, hey, you can. I can make a thousand arguments to explain it, but it, it was, I thought the comment fitted this spiritual conversation. Right. You know, it was always hard for John to say, I'm sorry, or I love you. But in one of his more lucid moments, a few months ago, he came to me and he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love you, I love you, I love you. And it brought me to, to tears. Absolutely. Yeah. He realized, I guess, that at least it wasn't too late. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah the follow-up I have, the father owes comments. 
is it came to me this week that forgiveness can be thought of as a subset of agape. If you read 1 Corinthians 13, all the things that love is not, you can fold forgiveness into that monologue very easily. I call it a subset. You can call it whatever you want. But, uh, if you love the way God does, if you fall within the realm of agape, forgiveness has got to be a natural follow-up. Very true. Very true. Agape love. Thank you all. This is a beautiful, beautiful conversation. If nobody else has any other comment, we can move on then with Psalm 103. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind, Lord is kind and merciful, and merciful. Slow, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord is, is kind and merciful, and merciful slow, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The, the Lord, Lord is, is kind, kind and, and merciful, merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is, the Lord the Lord is kind and merciful, and merciful slow, slow to anger, and rich in, rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness for those who fear him. As far as the cat east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The, the Lord, Lord is, kind is kind and merciful, and merciful slow, slow to anger, anger and rich and in compassion. compassion. It, what stands out from the psalm is that uh, one verse not according to our sins does he deal with us or does he what something else is requite huh? requite us according to our crimes yeah. it's like this is not a matter of justice or evenness it's total total abundance of mercy and compassion i like that a lot i don't know why it's uh not according to our sins, so he did, does he deal with us? So, a letter from a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 14. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. We live for the Lord. Live for the Lord. We are the Lord's. Mm -hmm. 
And Rafe shares from the chat, Christ died and came to life. I'll read it a second time. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Makes me think of the saying, we're all in this together. <laughs> and it's uh, in the, in the uh, lector's book, it says that, that, um, no longer is freedom based on a law written upon a scroll, but on a relationship, right? So it totally changed and relationships are messy. They're not quite as black and white as what you can put down on a piece of paper, but um, much, much more fruitful and seems to be more the way that we were meant to be. In relationship. In relationship. This is a very good uh, reading to choose for one's funeral. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, we are, we're in this, we're all in this together. We are the Lords. So we are like in the basket of um, the family of God's children. And that none of us live for oneself and no one dies for oneself. You know how the, that has a lot to do with the relationships that you were talking about, Tristan. You know, it's not it's, the minute you. Uh, your focus is not on your problems or on your life, but on somebody else's problems and lives, then your own problems disappear. That I, that I am convinced. It's, um, it's a wonderful equation or chemistry. Uh, God takes care of us when we take care of others. It's good to have that spiritual context. I have a more pragmatic approach. Which is? I focused on the resurrection. Christ died and came to life. If a person does not believe in life after death, he doesn't believe in resurrection, doesn't believe in heaven or hell, What is to keep him from doing whatever he wants without regard to the gospel, to the word of God, to righteousness? It makes no difference. There are no consequences. There's no heaven. There's no hell. Christ was brutalized, crucified, put in a tomb. Three days later, he's walking around talking to people. That made headlines. That was a shocker. To the Romans, to the Jewish community, to the Gentiles. There are consequences to your behavior, good and bad. 
Uh, I cannot believe what the Jewish leadership was doing on Easter Sunday. I think the word is apoplectic. <laughs> Jaw dropped, mouth open. Shock. Well, if you don't believe in heaven or hell, what would be the sense in trying to be good? Why would you care about anybody else? A couple thousand years ago, gods were there. Rain gods, sun gods, strong gods, river gods, to help you here on earth. They were here to help you right now. None of this helping me after I'm dead. Well, well, certainly, certainly without belief in the resurrection, there was still some familial love that you had for your own kids. Oh, for sure. And, and generosity and and maybe even a little pro bono put in because you were feeling generous, you know. But um, what did Christ say? Even even sinners love their own families, right? I'm telling you, love the sinners. Oh yeah. He's saying go beyond. Mafia people love other mafia people. Drug yeah. dealers, other drug dealers. I mean that that that's that's human nature. Yeah. Yeah. What controls? that behavior towards others. I don't know. I mean, I would prefer, I would prefer to be drawn to it than to have the wit scared out, you know, to be scared out of my daylights. So um, with the, but things better be all right in the world when you die, you know, is scaring me. Whereas I love you and I ask other people to love you it seems like a much more inviting thing to me. And it's just me. I think the answer to your question, Ray, is that uh, whether people admit it or not, or whether they admit to believe or not, uh, because we are created in the image and likeness of God, there is that, that something inside us that draw, that does draw us to, to desire the good in some way, shape, or form. <clears throat> and I think that's why those people who claim to not believe in anything uh, might be good for goodness sake, if you will. Uh, because there is that, that spark of goodness within everything of God's creation. That's why I did run father all out. They back. I'm afraid I, I'm afraid I, I shot you. It was oh. an emergency, emergency <laughs> to church, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's okay. It's all good. And, and Ray, maybe they haven't heard about being in that foxhole, you know, as you had told before, you know, where, they, where they turned to God, whether they believed or not, finally they turned to God. Well, before you, before you educate me, trust me, I'm a big believer in the Holy Spirit. A big believer. When I read this scripture, I highlighted Christ died, came to life. So I've always had a question in my mind, just how much did the old Jewish religion believe in life hereafter? after death. So I went to Wikipedia and the leaders of the Jewish community, the Sadducees, did not believe in heaven. Once you're dead, you work food. It's closed. According to Wikipedia, you know, if you read it on the internet, it's got to be true. And then I thought, Okay, I'm I'm a leader of the Jewish community. I got rid of this irritant, kind of crucified. I'm done with him. 
Thank God. He's out of my hair. Three days later, he's walking around talking to people. <laughs> Wake up and smell the coffee, Think right? About it. Think about it from a pragmatic, <laughs> real time point of view, not from a religious, uh, spiritual aspect. And, uh, they, they had to be beside themselves. But then the temple fell. Then the Sadducees got kicked out of his, out of their job, and the rabbinical Jew came in. It was a game changer. It Thank changed you. the Jewish religion forever in three days. You got it. You got it. The power of the resurrection. But we need to move on because time is pressing. Oh, um, that's me. Okay. Um, uh, from Matthew, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife and his children and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down and did him homage and said, be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of the servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When the servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, the fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he had paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. The master summoned him and, and said to him, you wicked servant, I gave, forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. From the chat, Ray shared, how often must I forgive? Be patient with me. Pity on your fellow servants. Okay, we want to hear it one more time. Would you? Sure. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, 
how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant left, had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, the servant begged, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put into prison until he had paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and they went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you until each of you forgives your brother from your heart. Wanted to add compassion. Yeah. God doesn't like two faced people. I have an issue with two two parts of the gospel. One is at the very end, uh, so will my heavenly father do to you? unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. I always preached or said or thought that when if we are condemned, if we go to hell, it's not because God wants to do that to us. We brought it up upon ourselves by our wrong choices. We went to hell because we want it, not because God wanted. it. So when it says here, so would my heavenly father do to you, Unless each of you forgives, it's um, it's a little um, difficult for me to accept it at face value. The other part was at the beginning is <clears throat> um, when he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and his property, you know, the whole issue of slavery. Mm. And how can God then put a price, you know, one's life, one's life is priceless. And uh, in payment of the debt, maybe I'm, uh, it just made me think about that as slavery and how, you know, no one can pay a price on, can put a, a, a price tag on anybody. How can this, which this master, this king that symbolizes God, be doing that, you know, for a subject of his? Okay, we'll wrap it all up then with prayers. <laughs> We need, like, what happened, Bert? I can see you, Bert, but I can hear you. <laughs> oh, is it my video not on? I don't have my, I, I hide my, uh, where I don't have to see myself. You can turn your, your, your self view off. So I didn't realize that my camera. Yeah, 
the essence of who you are is the, oh, there you are. Because <laughs> I, yeah, I had set the thing for, to hide the self view. So I didn't even realize I was, I, I mean, I was been here the whole time listening, <laughs> lurking in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> and not, not playing Pokemon Go? No. <laughs> No. I thought it was a really good discussion though. Yes. So I'd like to um, pray for those who help others, um, in particular, um, those who help those in nursing homes and hospitals, um, child hospitals, care centers, um, those who, who Touch the vulnerable daily. I'd like to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord. I'd like to pray, talking about hospital and those who are, you know, care for them and that are uh, health challenges. Uh, Will, Donna and Will, Will is, has been in the hospital. So we lift him up in prayer. Um, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the Libya flooding, um, may they um, get the help that they need and um, mourn their dead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayers. These intentions and those that we have in our heart, we offer to the Father with the prayer that Jesus uh, taught us, as we say. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Shepherd, have mercy. have mercy on us. O good shepherd. Keep us safe. O Mary Immaculate. Pray for us. Wanted to um, bring to your attention the Gainsborough, Gainsborough, the blue girl. The blue girl. Gainsborough, the blue girl. It's at the the screen. Oh, the artist Gainsborough. That painted. Gainsborough. That's it. Tell us about it, uh, Mean Jean, about the, the color of your hair. <laughs> Tell us. Uh, Tell us? Yes. Okay. Well, um, you know, Mary Harrison has uh, breast and bone cancer, and I needed to do something to support her, to show that I was supporting her, which of course I do. But um, anyway, so she, I said, well, I'll, I'll get them all. And everybody told me your hair is too fine, too thin to support them all. I said, okay. Uh, Mary, Mary doesn't like pink. So I said, okay, Mary, I'll hair blue for you. <laughs> so we've got blue hair. Bring it, bring it closer to the camera. Bring it closer to the computer screen yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. Thank it you. looks cute. Thank you for showing that solidarity. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. You know, I, I just I like and support her, but of course I support her in other ways. But I love Mary very much. She's a very special person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, thank you all for your input, your presence.